We're currently in the kingdom of Tonga. Yes, it is a monarchy. And it's also a remote island country in the South Pacific. And when I say remote, I really mean that. <laughs> we are thousands of miles from any other mainland or larger Western civilization. And that is a beautiful thing in a lot of different ways because we're COVID free, that's pretty fantastic. But we're also really far away from a lot of supplies and a lot of niceties, I guess you would say. I wanna take you with this because we're headed into town. We got a lot of stuff we gotta pick up today, running a lot of errands, and it just is a good opportunity to to show you what it's like shopping, finding things on this remote island in the middle of the South Pacific. So we are in Bava'u, Tonga, and let's go to the village. Now you might be thinking, really wins, we're going shopping, but stick with me here because this is a big part of what makes life drastically different here. Because we're a long way from the conveniences of a Home Depot, Costco, or Amazon Prime. from like crystal clear turquoise waters to the deep blue. See the line. All right, Captain, what's our journey today? We are going about five or so miles. I'm not really sure because the pass we're going through is not really marked. It'll take us about half an hour, but the real adventure is going to be when we leave Niafu, the main town, and head back to Tapana because we'll be going against the wind and the waves, and I think it's gonna be a lot wetter. This is the easy one. This is a short, quick trip, but they're way back, yeah. Wet and long. <laughs> Sounds kind of dirty. Stand on the board, quick! Stand on the board, up front, up front, up front! I didn't think about that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Go around the board. Over to the loopy thing. Tiny loopy thing. And then tight enough so we don't bash into the old part of the dock. <laughs> Three weeks, almost a month. Oh, and if you want to know, seven miles, and it took us 45 minutes. Average speed of eight knots, but we stopped a few times, so. There you go. Not too bad, max speed 22 knots. <laughs> it says we don't have a go fast dinghy. Yeah. <laughs> First stop of the day is the veggie market because, well, we have to go early in the day where there's really nothing in there but because of the time of year, there's not much in there anyway right now. So it's always kind of nerve wracking showing up. Cause you're like, is there gonna be anything at all? Will we get any food today? Will we get eggs? Will we get eggs? Oh. Okay, I've got about between 30 and 60 seconds before I'm either completely drained of blood or carried away by the mosquitoes. So I'm gonna keep this brief, but I needed to remind you that we have teamed up with Omaze because, well, they give away really insane prizes and they help charity. So first let's talk about the prize, which is a Mercedes-Benz 4x4 Sprinter van with $80,000 worth of customizations by Van Smith. Now, if we were to go back to van life, this is the van we would choose because the 4x4 chassis is gonna get you out exploring all the back roads, and you get $80,000 worth of customizations by Vansmith. So you can set it up to be fully off the grid with plenty of solar and lithium battery, and that's just the only way to go. The best part is every donation supports the charity Access Fund. Their mission is to protect public lands, restore climbing areas, and repair impacted trails. Now this happy guy, Lars, he won the van last time, and the donations helped Access Fund repair 190 miles of trails which is incredible and that's why they're doing it again so click over to omaze.com slash gwtw and enter for your chance to win and support a great cause 
Oh, okay. Now I'm going to get back to moving and you're going to go back to the market. Totally lucked out today. It is a good day at the market. There's actually quite a selection. I am thrilled. Onions and carrots and lemon or lime? Lime. Lime. Okay. Take a bag of those. They look great. Right. Oh, I have bags. Thank you. I'm going to take a pile of ginger and a pile of chilies. Those are the hot ones? Yeah. And a pile of peppers. Okay, so it's 35 panga. This is my favorite, the two dollars, because it has the whale on it. It's beautiful. Malo. Only in the islands. Most everything at the market is local, with a couple of exceptions like onions, garlic, and even the carrots today are imported from New Zealand. But everything else is all grown here on the island or on a neighboring island, which means it's seasonal, which is really cool, except for the fact that if you've got a hankering for your avo toast or say a fresh tomato, you're just gonna have to wait another six months. <laughs> Pele, local spinach. Your favorite bananas, the little fingers, and bush. Lemons. Yes, these are lemons. Malo? Malo. Bye. Bye. Can I put thank you? Thank you. Take care. Thank you. A very important stop. The egg lady. Oh, hi. How are you? Good. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is the egg lady. She's oh, the yeah. best. Yeah. Fresh Malo. Local eggs, eh? Local eggs. Yeah. They're the best. The best on the island. Yeah, twenty dollar. Twenty dollar. Yeah, one tray. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so she's the only lady on the island of Ava'u that has fresh local eggs. The rest of them all come from Nukalofa, which is the main town, and they come up on ferry. So sometimes they're sort of fresh, and sometimes they're not so fresh. Yeah. On a bad week, she'll be sold out. I mean, a bad week for us, good week for her. She'll yeah, be sold yeah. <laughs> out for a week or sometimes two. But it is kind of a thing every time. Are we gonna get eggs? Will we ever get eggs? <laughs> I don't like everything on this island. Will we ever get cheese? Yeah. Will we ever get tortilla chips? It makes it so exciting though when you finally do get it. Yeah, so now we're going back to the boat to drop the precious goods off and then we'll go to the store. Stores, yeah. yeah, the store. Try to keep them in the shade as much as possible. <laughs> really good raw sugar from Fiji, the same stuff we were buying when we were there. And they get the flour in big bags like this, and then they repackage it. So you can buy it in small quantities. Yeah, and then the flour, you know. Makes buying flour interesting because now you have no idea what the expiration date is. So this is it. This is the one aisle here in this market, which is actually a pretty good market with a really good selection. They have a lot of different things for an island. <laughs> Cereal, milk, rice and oil, one choice of coffee. Get a lot of different types of like little snacks and stuff like that. But when it comes to like pantry staples, you don't get a lot of variety. No other types of flour. You can't get corn flour for making corn tortillas or corn chips. Um, no whole grain or multi-grain flours or anything like that. It's just the one type. This is our baking selection. A few box cakes, some cocoa powder, custard powder, and pancake mix. Funny thing exciting? Uh, I think we should go to the liquor store too because I think we're out of rum. <laughs> Personal care. The gardening center. The liquor store. That's the uh, wine selection. And this is the liquor selection and our best bet is this one here it's 85 pahanga which is about 40 dollars us i have no idea what it cost anywhere else but it's pretty decent rum 
for 40 bucks. We've got New Zealand Pure, Steinlager, Maka, Fosters, and some Heinekens back there. I'd say the best is probably the Maka. Lunch break. Pop into the hardware store real quick and show you around. So in the States, if I would need like say a pair of ice grips or something, I would go into Lowe's or Home Depot and there'd be five different brands and a ton of different sizes. I'd probably have 20 choices. Well here, we've got one choice and it's 30 Paango, which is about $15, so it's not a bad price, but this is literally the only option. It kind of goes for everything from hammers to door hardware to cabinetry hardware to anything. anything. Yeah, pretty much. They do have screws and stuff in there, but no stainless steel. So if you want stainless, you gotta go to the yacht shop, which is on the other end of town. We're gonna get a couple miles of walking in today. Don't, don't worry. The other end of town, because it's so far. How are you? Good. How about yourself? Risotto today. So are you photographing or filming? Uh oh. <laughs> Welcome to Cafe Tropicana. This is like Tropicana, Tropicana, however you want to say it. This is like tomato, the tomato. cruiser hotspot. They rent bikes, they provide services for cruisers. They've got like a little internet cafe with computers and printers. and You can get lunch and a cold beer. And this one is the local yeah. beer, Maka. It's actually pretty tasty for an island beer, especially when it's ice cold. Hot day, cold beer. No complaints. Yeah. So what happens when you need something that just doesn't exist here? You have to ship it in. We've tried UPS and it hasn't worked, but you, but FedEx will get you something here in about three weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And the normal size box will cost you about 250 to Thank 300 you. US. Malo. <laughs> Thank you. Every island we've been to, obviously that it changes. It may be UPS that's better, maybe FedEx is better. It could be putting it on a ship and that's your best bet for getting something somewhere. It changes island to island, but here it seems to be FedEx. The other option would be a freight ship. And uh, if you have a lot to ship, then that's definitely the way to do it because you can fill an entire crate, mm -hmm. a four by eight crate and ship it from the US, from California for about a thousand dollars. Yeah, US. maybe 1200 I can't remember what the yeah. exact, but it was right around there, which isn't bad considering it's a pretty big package. And it normally takes about a month or so to get here if you hit the cutoff date just right. Otherwise, you have to wait a month. It ships once a month, so if that makes sense. Yeah. It could take up to two months. But right now with COVID, it's taking about three. Four. And you're lucky if you get everything because there's some logistical issues, of course. Yeah just because of everything going on. But that's what most of the locals do is once or twice a year, they will have a big crate shipped over either from the US or from New Zealand, maybe both. And that's how they get in supplies that they just can't get here otherwise. Look at this. Yes. Look at that. Mama. Thank you. This is a fresh snapper burger with pesto mayo, pesto mayo yeah. and then french fries. Okay. Where were we? I, don't, I have no idea. Oh, we were on fish sandwich, right? <laughs> yeah, right. The one thing we did not talk about was customs and import duties. Ooh, yeah. oh, so cool. if we buy like say a thousand dollar computer and have it shipped here then we have to pay import and duties and that's usually between 30 and 40 percent depending on what the product is. Yep. So your one thousand dollar laptop is now a fourteen hundred dollar laptop mm -hmm. by the time you get it here. Yeah. And that's oh, plus on, shipping. Yes yeah. and that's on every single individual item. So doesn't seem like such a big deal, maybe, but when you start to add that up on everything that you need, the cost really starts to go up. So it makes you very conscious of everything you purchase. How badly do you need it? Do you really need it? Yeah. And how badly do you want it? And are you willing to pay for it? That's it. That's shipping. That's the other option. Okay. You're right. Lunch time. Hoo-ha. Mm-hmm. We got it. Um, for the food shop. Food shop. Mm, it's always the best. So sexy watching somebody yeah. else eat. <laughs> <laughs> cut away, cut away, cut away. Just cut away. Do it, cut away. I love making her do that. <laughs> it's so much fun. It just makes me smile. <laughs> it's 
Speaking of shipping things, the FedEx office is here. I'm gonna go and ask the lady about shipping a new computer. Hello. So what's the status of our fans? All right, the fans were shipped about a month ago from Canada and they took a really weird trip. Now they're in New Zealand. And Linda here is gonna find out for us <laughs> if they're still stuck in New Zealand or what the scoop is. And then also I asked about the computer and she said, unfortunately from New Zealand to here, you can't ship FedEx a computer because it's a lithium battery, but we could ship it New Zealand Post and then she can help me clear it. There you go. Yeah. A lot of hands in the pot. A lot of cooks in the kitchen. A lot of cooks in the kitchen. A lot of extra, you know what. All right, so this is one of our favorite little stops. It's called Snab. And these ladies bring in all sorts of like specialty items. So if you're looking for something fancy, you can usually find it at Snap. Hello. Mixed nuts. That would be, you wouldn't find that really anywhere else. Nice soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, almond oil. You're not gonna find that anywhere else. Some raw almonds. Also a rare specialty find. Sometimes they'll have frozen fruit, but it looks like they are all out. We should show them how they do the meat. Oh, there you go. Ah, so Same. the meat's kind of like the flour and the sugar. It's just sort of cut and repackaged. It doesn't mean it's bad or anything yeah. like that. It's just... It's just the way it is. Yeah, it's just different. This is a nicer peanut butter, and you can only get that here at this store. And agave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's also, that's definitely specialty. Funny things like that you won't find anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that. What, what, what am that's I looking at? That's actual coffee. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at that. I, we've, I've never ever seen that before. Nope, that must be new. She must have just gotten that in. Very specialty. Fancy. You start taking videos of the groceries. <laughs> <laughs> you what? End up, you end up as a cruiser, you end up being a hoarder, you know, you see something. <laughs> Did you see this? It's coffee. Oh yeah, I, I, I haven't seen it like that, but oh, yeah. I've seen other stuff. <laughs> like cereal, vanilla <laughs> and almond. These are the things that cruisers get excited about, right? <laughs> <laughs> I get excited about cream of mushroom soup. Yeah, <sighs> right? It's the little things. It's just the little things. That's yeah. actually what we're talking about today. Yeah. Is we're telling everybody that it's so funny because it's hard to wrap your head around the limited selection you can find in the island. So little things like getting cheese back in yeah, is a uh -huh. big deal. Or like just finding your favorite brand of chips that you yeah. like. You know, it's just not going to happen. And you have to go foraging across about 10 or 12 different stores. And each one has stuff that you want. This is Roy. Hi. <laughs> I'm Roy. How long have you been here, Roy? Since a year ago, August. You're sick here because of COVID too. Yeah, I'm a COVID refugee. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of another interesting thing is the fact that you really only get boxed or powdered milk in most of the islands. The only place we've ever seen that they have dairy cows and actually have fresh milk was in Tahiti. And that's it. All the other islands we've ever been to, it's boxed and powdered milk. So making yogurt can be a little bit challenging. Chef have to have special cultures that will actually work with UHT milk. And of course, you can't really make cheese or any other dairy items. Just dairy is kind of a rare thing in the islands, which is why it takes a long time to get cheese or anything. But the bonus, powdered milk is really lightweight and works for baking. Yep, and very easy to store lots of it on a boat. You have all the best stuff. Yes, we're telling everybody that this is the best place to come if you want <laughs> fancy foods. Because you bring in all the good stuff. <laughs> it's so hard for you to get some yeah. of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like frozen fruit, you don't have any more frozen fruit right now. Yeah, we do all that good from our time but it's all finished. All finished. So who knows, right? You just mm -hmm. have to wait. No, wait. But you'll call us when you have frozen fruit, yeah? I will. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> That's the best part, they'll call you. Exactly, they take your phone number, they'll let you know when they get it. I think we'll have some new stuff um, next week. Okay. Uncle says that the ferry is going to be arrived at Dapua this week at 19th. Okay. And then it'll be another week. And before. hopefully they will bring some new stuff next week or the following week. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> stopped in to get some toilet paper and this one says super tough 
quality of life. That is just not what you want your toilet paper to say. Super soft, <laughs> gentle, not super tough. Might as well say rough and ready. <laughs> Okay, maybe we go for the one that says 1000? ED1000. Erectile dysfunction toilet paper or <laughs> sunburst, sunburst investments. Okay. Just like the hardware store, when you get to like the personal care section of the stores, you've got between one and three options for something. Toothpaste, you've got one. <laughs> and toothbrushes, you've got just a few basic ones. So no fancy, you know, bamboo or all natural fiber bristles or anything like that. Nothing here. electric. Nothing electric, no. So it's just limited options. Anything fancy you want, you go to Snab or you ship it in. You got your toilet paper and your paper, a couple of packs of crisps, as they would say in uh, New Zealand or the UK. Pack of crisps. Pack of crisps. Potato chips. <laughs> Another year off your life, just like that. Oh, you forgot to say that you get you can actually buy local roasted coffee and local coffee from oh, Cafe, Cafe Tropicana. Yeah, Greg, super nice. He does like everything, and he does sell the locally roasted and apparently locally grown coffee, and that's kind of where we get our coffee from. We're a small island. It's yeah. Pretty sweet. To the gotcha. Where else can you go in town and have a lovely shopping experience and air conditioning? That's what I was gonna say. I was like, look at this. Oh, this I is know. what's most amazing about here. So, you know, there's lots of times where you come into the yacht shop and you don't actually need anything. You just pretend that you do so that you can come in and browse, <laughs> spend a couple of minutes in the AC, cool off. But they don't, they don't judge you too harshly no, for it. No, no. They do have a little bit of everything for cleaning, lubing, Sealing, protecting, mm -hmm. and more protecting. You got your hose. Yep, my favorite part of yeah. the store. Just some general lines, fittings. Mm -hmm. Fishing supplies, that's a, a very popular one with the locals for fishing supplies. Yep. And fishing most fishing. importantly, Stainless, Stainless steel, yeah. bolts, screws, nuts, washers, a little bit of everything. And sorry, Americans, it's almost all metric. They'll say it's the better way, but you know. Oh, and, and, uh, fence, mask, snorkel, anything kind of, yeah, random little bits and bobs, depending on what you need. And whatever they don't have, you ask and they'll help get it shipped in for you. All things considered, the yacht shop is pretty well stocked for such a small island and they've only existed for about five to six years but that's just long enough for them to be fully in the groove of everything so they really can get you almost anything you need marine wise you just have to be willing to wait for it because it does take a minimum of one to two months depending on where your part is coming from oh, oh. fuel last fuel. stop last stop in the ride home Oh, the battery's almost dead. Uh-oh. Last drop off and pick up. This is trip number three from the boat. It's about a quarter mile walk each time from the boat up to the hill there. Hello. Oh, it's too empty now. Still empty? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so, no fuel? I'm waiting for the truck, I don't know what is what uh, at the time. Where's the closest gas then? Uh, up to the you. main road past the police station? Yeah. It's a long walk. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he says EO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How bad lady want gas? Well, we're 40 liters down. <laughs> Phew. How badly do you want to go on another adventure? Yeah, I know. <sighs> she says really hot. <laughs> After you've been walking for a while, when it's really hot, your feet get tired, swollen. And I know none of you actually care right now. <laughs> you're like, whatever, you're in tongue, shut up.
days, huh? Yeah. I'm swimming my pool. Oh, you got a pool? Yeah. Nice. And you have an espresso machine at home. Yeah, just. Yeah. <laughs> How did you guess that? <laughs> Living the good life. Yeah. And you're up near Mount Talat, you said. Yeah, across the road from the park. Thanks, man. See yes, thank you so much. Okay, that's Greg again from Tropicana. <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh man, Woo! for the ride back, oh, such a lifesaver. Take you home? Take me home. We get cold coconut and it's dipping some cold water. Yeah. Dogs are barking. Look at that. Just in the nick of time. Made it home just in time for sundowners after about 40 glasses of water. <laughs> ah, okay, let's unload. That's it. That's it. So that's it. That was our shopping day. A little peek at what it's like to go shopping on a remote island in the South Pacific. And just get stuff. And or not. not. <laughs> and not get stuff. <laughs> Obviously, we think that sacrificing the everyday conveniences is worth it to have all of this. And so do all the people who live here and all the expats who live here. And the little inconveniences are totally worth the trade-off of having the lifestyle and being where they are. Oh, that sunset looks good. It's so soft. Pastel hues and deep shades of purple. And there's also definitely a dinosaur in that one cloud. <laughs> that one right there. Yep. It's like a, a little T-Rex or... Barney? <laughs> Still a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Uh -huh. Bye. Thank you. Love you all. It's a cloud. Oh, look, that one's a seahorse. Oh, yeah.